When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Hello and welcome to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Byer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Our Lord's Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. It's really interesting when you look at the values and the thing that earns prestige and acclaim here in our modern society. Back in the day, 25 years ago, there was some woman's magazine, Glamour or whatever, I don't read women's magazines, but there was one of the women's magazines that proclaimed Mother Teresa of Calcutta is one of the most admired women in the world. Really? She had one pair of sandals, two sarongs, and she was about this tall, never put makeup on in her life. Her face was incredibly wrinkled. Her back was hunched over. And she was one of the most admired women in the world by people who look at glitz and glamour and models and jewelry and hair and fame and fortune and movie stars and the most admired woman in the world. Mother Teresa was an incredible contradiction to the world in which we live. I think because she was such a contradiction, therein lied her sainthood. Therein lied her real strength. Not, not to give into the world. If you remember when they tried to bestow upon her the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo, Norway, and they wanted to have the big dinner, she asked not to have the dinner, but would you please save that money and give it to feed the poor? Here's my point. The things of the world and the things of God don't oftentimes align. I always get a kick out of people who say that the Catholic Church is idolatrous. And we're idolatrous because we have statues and we're making graven images and having them come before God and that that's idolatry. Okay? We've got a person like Mary, the mother of God, the one person chosen in all human history to bring our Savior to the world. We've got various people who, who lived 
heroic lives for the sake of the gospel and oftentimes giving their lives for the sake of the gospel. And that's idolatrous. Well, have you ever seen people line up for the red carpet in Hollywood to see what kind of dress and who the designer is for this person? Have you ever seen people wait in line for hours to get tickets to a concert? Because we think these just the best band ever. Have you ever seen people willing to pay four or five thousand dollars for tickets to a Super Bowl game because their team is in it? Have you ever seen people pay five hundred dollars so that some sports star can scribble their name on his baseball cap and they get five hundred dollars? for giving their autograph on a ball, a cap, or jersey, whatever the case may be. And you're going to tell me that a statue of the Blessed Mother is idolatry? Do you know how many people we worship in society because of either musical, athletic, or acting, or whatever the case may be, Sports, we have many, many false gods. And today when our Lord is talking about the Beatitudes, he's talking about the different things that we're going to experience in life and how to use these opportunities to bring us closer to God. Nobody's going to say, you know, I mean, I, I really want to be persecuted. No one's going to say, you know, I, I really want to mourn all the time. But what he's telling us is, is that in every situation, in every opportunity, God gives us the opportunity to take whatever it is and bring it to God and to grow in our knowledge and our love and our desire for God. Even the most difficult things in life can be used for the glory of God because we certainly don't use those other things for the glory of God. We certainly don't use it for the glory of God when we decide that we're going we're gonna to worship a football team or whatever. And I've oftentimes thought about that. Our, our university stadium holds... I think 101,000 people. And, you know, people line up for games and season tickets are, I don't know, in the thousands and stuff like that. And people are clamoring and waiting in line to get their chance to pay all that money. And the better the tickets, you know, the more expensive they are, but they don't care because it's a great ticket and it's in a suite. And do you realize the only place that you can arrive at and be 10 minutes late and still get the front pew is in a Catholic church? You know, those who do come all sit in the back, but you come 10 minutes late and you get the front pew in most Catholic church you go to. What's the point? The point is, is our Lord is trying to remind us of all those things that are glitter and gold. They're not the things that really matter. Blessed to the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. He's not talking about blessed to people who wear, who live in cardboard boxes. He's not talking about Blessed are people who live in government housing. He's talking about the poor in spirit. What does the poor in spirit mean? And I love this. The very first time I was in the presence of Mother Teresa was 1981. 
and it was at a priest retreat, and we were in the all the nerve of the audience hall in Rome. 6,000 priests. This little nun walks in and said, my name is Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and I enjoy the freedom of poverty. I thought, huh, we got programs of that in our country. And she said, no, it's not that I own nothing, but nothing owns me. That's what we're talking about, the poor in spirit. I don't care if you live in a mansion or a lean-to. You can live in a mansion and the stuff not really matter. You can live in a lean-to and all you do is want more and more and more and more. And the only thing you, you seek for is finer material things rather than spiritual things. So when our Lord talk, talks about blessed to the poor in spirit, it's not a question of what you have. It's a question of what has you. What has got you so completely preoccupied? What has become so important to you in your life that it's even more important than your relationship with God and your desire to live for God and your desire to do the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. That's the poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. You know, there was a song many years ago said, it never felt so good to hurt so bad. And what that tells me is if you had someone that you've lost, and I'm telling you what, you feel lost without them. They were just the greatest blessing in your life. They were so stand up. They were so important. They were so good. You know, they, they meant so much. You were so lucky to have them in your life. God bless you. Those are not the difficult funerals for me. The difficult funerals for me are when they've lived 75 or 80 years and no one cries and no one's going to miss them and they added nothing to anyone's life and now that they, they're gone, there's just one less problem to worry about. That's tragic. That's really tragic. But for those people who've been so blessed that you had so much that to lose it has caused such sorrow, you're truly blessed. And our Lord, they'll be comforted. They'll come to know that the only reason this is so painful is because I was so blessed in the first place. And rather than feel the grief of loss, I need to turn that into the grief of gratitude for having had it as long as I did. Because there are some people in life who will never know for one day the joy, the comfort, the gift that I had and that person. And I'll be consoled by my gratitude once I realize how blessed I really was. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bayou from Close to Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that would, is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. And blessed are they who hunger and thirst, the merciful, 
the clean of heart, the peacemaker, the persecuted, the insulted. Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Byer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know, it takes a special person to look at life and be aware that all things are not just. It takes a special heart to look around and see those people who need and see those people who do without and see those people that just don't have the opportunities that everyone else has or they should have. And those people who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, some of them go around and make it their life's work to condemn anything they don't agree with. But others go very quietly and very determinedly to care for and make sure people who are less fortunate that the righteousness that belongs to them, the opportunity that belongs to them. They're seeking the justice of God. And in doing that, they'll be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful. And that having, having pity and mercy on people who are, they're just so sad. They're so down and out. Uh, you know, that's easy. That's a real easy one. You look at the less fortunate, you realize what they're going through, you reach out in care and concern for that person to try to do something to help them. Those are the easy ones. I'll tell you where I struggle. Someone's got a head of hair, four or five different colors. You know, it's a spiked hair. They're yelling, they're angry, they're in your face. And, you know, they're against what you believe in and what you stand for and, you know, and the values that you have. I have a hard time being merciful to them. But you know what? I got to look very carefully and say, what's missing in that child's life? You know, why do you have a rainbow head of hair spiked all over the place? Did you never get any attention just having a normal head of hair? Did you never get a hearing just being able to talk to someone and have a conversation and to be open? Just to yelling and screaming and demanding and threatening? If, if, if that's your only way of communication, you've not been treated very well in this life. And you deserve some understanding and some compassion to try to be brought along. I have a hard time with that. But that's what we're called to do. You know, that when, when we can look at situations and everyone, everyone reacts to the incidents and the accidents of their life in very, very different ways. You know, and some people can look at it and see it's one of those things that, that happens and get on with life. Other people are going to spend the rest of their life being the victim and the rest of their life looking for someone else to blame, to have mercy and understanding. God offers us that same mercy in the midst of our own confusions or even in the midst of our, our own wrongheadedness. The next one is blessed are the pure of heart, or the clean of heart. You know, there are not a lot of pure of heart, clean of heart out there. And I wouldn't even appreciate it. I was good friends with a priest, and he and his family were going on a vacation. They invited me to go with them. 
we we go up to New York, and, and and his dad's a storekeeper and a butcher, one of the sweetest little men you ever want to meet. You know, wouldn't say ouch if you stepped on his foot, but he was just a kind, gentle man. And we get to our hotel in New York City, which is, you know, for us really a a, a busy place. And we're going up to the room, and this older man and younger prostitute get in the elevator with us and they're both tucking in their, their clothes and she's trying to put her eyelash back on or whatever, okay? And they get off at another floor and he said, isn't that nice? He's taking his daughter to New York. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? He's taking his daughter to New York. And you really have people like that. And you really have people who are pure of heart and they see only the good things in people and they see only the best of people. And this guy, Joe, he was, he was, he was that one. He was, he was the, the pure of heart. And I really longed to be like that. I longed not to be so critical. I longed not to be so judgmental. I may not let it come out of my mouth, but boy, it sure comes in my mind. And to me, that's just as bad. And I've learned to shut up, but I haven't learned to have that pure of heart, you know? And it says, you know, those who see God, the pure of heart will see God. He sees them all the time and this nice man who took his daughter to New York. He saw God, he saw the best. And blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemaking is a tricky deal. There's some times where peacemaking, you know, and we all lived happily ever after, is not the best thing to do. Sometimes the tensions in life and sometimes the tensions that exist between different perspectives, different points of view, different ways of doing things can be a healthy thing. But we're called to do it with charity. We're called to do it with kindness. And he's talking about blessed be the peacemakers. What he's really trying to do is the angry people who always have a score to settle, who are always going to get up in your face, who always think they know better and they're not backing down and you can't. Hey, lighten up, back off. That's what he's talking about with, with peacemakers. People who would rather work things out than fight them out. And they're those, and those are the ones who are called children of God. They look for unity, not division. And blessed are those persecuted for the sake of righteousness. You know what? That's becoming a real deal. I believe every human life is important in the sight of God. And I believe every human life begins at, at, at conception. And I believe only God can bring life, and only God can take life. I believe each and every person is created in the image and likeness of God. I believe that every person is created for God, and I believe that every person is created to be with God. That might sound like a very innocent statement, but people are persecuted for that statement. People are harassed for that statement. People are vandalized and they're firebombed for those statements. Just where we are. It's where we are in society. You know, and when I and when when I hear some, you know, has been actress say something like, I never knew what freedom I had as a woman until I had my first abortion. 
Mother Teresa, there's no greater poverty than a child should have to die than for you to live as you wish. No greater poverty. And for the people who persecute those who believe in God's law, they really need prayers. They absolutely need prayers. They need healing. They need an understanding. They need hope. They need to return to God. But if you are scared of the persecution and you abdicate God for the sake of being accepted, God help you. It won't go well. And blessed to you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you uh, because of me, be glad and rejoice for your reward will be great in heaven. I really, really worry about people who make the statement, well, you know, I was raised Catholic, but now I'm a free thinker. Or I was raised Catholic, but I have evolved. Evolved is a buzzword for people to say, I no longer believe what God teaches, but I'm at a point in my life where I think society and going along with society is more important than remaining faithful to God. That's what that evolved buzzword means. Our Lord is talking about our willingness to live countercultural. Counter our Lord is talking about our willingness to go against the flow in order to remain faithful to him. And that charge and that invitation and that challenge becomes greater by the day. And every person needs to make that choice. I'd much rather have a reward great in heaven than a reward great here. Thanks for being with us. May each day bring you close in your walk with the Lord. God bless you. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Join us here in this station each week as we strive to bring you the gospel message with great clarity and great charity. And may God bless you in your walk each day.